Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast YouTube channel. Hey, today I get to go out to Virginia, one of my top three states I'd love to farm in someday. And I get to go right to the center of the state to Appomattox. And I'm going to be interviewing two students in a row from Appomattox. First is going to be Jamonte Hubbard, who's going to be coming on and telling us all about developing his pig business in high school and how the FFA got him started and how he sees himself continuing with this business going forward in the future. We'll have that starting for you right now. Joining me today is Jamonte Hubbard, and he is coming to us from Appomattox County High School in Appomattox, Virginia, where he is formerly an FFA member and today finds himself working full-time and done with high school. Jamonte, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey. <laughs> well, hey, I really appreciate your advisor, uh, Mr. McCann, kind of hooking me up with the interview and coordinating all this for me. But I, I'm excited to learn more about what you've been doing and in the FFA. You ready to just jump in? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> all right. Well, I want to ask you just a few questions about you, Jamonte, uh, so our audience can kind of get to know who they're talking to uh, or who they're listening to. Excuse me. How old are you now? 19. All right. And when, you, uh, when you're when you not at work, when you're at home, are you on a farm? Are you in town or something kind of in between? Just farm and work. Farm and work. And is that what you're doing full-time these days? No. No? All right. Well, we'll, we'll get into that for a second. Um, what, is you, what does your family do at home on the farm? What kind of farming do you all do? We do um, swine. Oh, okay. So you're raising pigs. Are you doing a farrow to finish or farrow to weaning, or, or what are you doing? What's your model there? Well, we do it all. We do um, piglets and slaughter hogs. Okay, so you're doing it all. Do you sell? Do you sell weaned pigs, or do you finish everything through to slaughter? We sell them. You sell them. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. And how long has this been going on in your family? How long has this uh, farm, I guess, been been with your your family? Uh, for a good while. <laughs> okay. So what's a good while? Is that five years or is that, you know, 150 years? Probably five years. <laughs> okay. Very good. So what got you all into farming then? Uh, my grandpa used to um, raise hogs a long time ago. So okay. that got me into raising hogs. Very cool. So you kind of got it going then? Yeah. Very good. Well, good for you. And so uh, you you learned about the family of your hair, I guess your heritage with your grandfather doing it, and decided I want to do this too. Yeah, well, that's cool. I like that. You know, I'm the same way. I like to learn what my grandparents did and and, and replicate some of that stuff. I like to keep some of those traditions alive. Mm -hmm. Now, what part of the state? What part of Virginia is Appomattox in? Central. Central. All right. I know that. I think everybody knows knows the name of your town just from the from the Civil War history. Obviously, there was a big battle there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, cool. Well, so what do you find yourself doing full time these days? You said in the pre-interview that you were working, and uh, that's not farming. So, what do you find yourself doing full time? I work at um, Boxler. Okay. Now, what is that? It's just like a. a um, asphalt company okay so are are you uh out actually paving roads and putting asphalt down in the middle of that summer heat like i sometimes see yeah i put down slurry okay there's a difference in latex okay is it is it is it as hot as it looks like it is when i drive by no it ain't like asphalt oh, okay so not quite as hot very good how did you get involved yeah. in that uh, I got, uh, when I graduated, I decided to try something new. Okay. But I still raise, um, hogs though. Okay. Very cool. Now, when did you graduate? Was it, was it last year or the year before? This year, 2019. Okay. So you just graduated. And how long have you been involved in the FFA, Jamonte? For about four years. Okay. So what brought you in? Why did you want to join this organization? Because when I was, um, cause I liked animals and all that, and mm -hmm. get to know different people. Gotcha. So this was kind of a way to 
to do both of those things. You could work with livestock, obviously, through the FFA, but you could also get involved in an organization and meet some people then. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Very cool. Now, have have you grown up in Virginia? You lived there your whole life? Yep, I lived, yep, I lived in Virginia all my life. All right. What if I told you that of all the states I'd love to farm in, Virginia always makes my top three? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think you live in a beautiful state. I really like it back there. I've got family there in southern Virginia and uh, really enjoy every time I get to go back and, and I get to visit Jamonte. Well, let's do this. I, I always like to have our, our student guests kind of acknowledge who their FFA advisors were just to give a shout out to them. Who was that for you? Uh, I had um, Kirsten at Eubank, Jared Morgan. And I forgot the album. <laughs> okay. Obvious, did you not have Mr. McCann as your advisor? Yeah, I had him and Miss Duncan and Miss okay. Henson. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for acknowledging them. And real quick, uh, Jamonte, I need to talk about one of my great sponsors, everybody. You know I'm going to be talking about Powder River Livestock Handling Equipment. They make absolutely fantastic livestock handling equipment for your large livestock squeeze chutes, sweep tubs, runways, panels, calf tables. I mean, whatever you need to handle your large livestock, they've been making it for over 80 years for the most hard to handle cattle that we have on the face of this earth out here coming off the rangelands in the West. And now they're making them for you too. If they can handle those cows, they can certainly keep yours stress free and injury free. Please check them out. Powder River dot com and make sure your local ranch and farm retailer knows that you'd like them to carry powder river livestock handling equipment all right well jamonte thank you for letting me get away with that i i want to ask you about your supervised agricultural experience so mr mccann was excited to to have me profile what you had been doing for that during high school what was it uh, i raised swine from piglets to slaughter then uh raise so many boars also okay so pork production and this was something this was something that you had seen that your grandfather had done so you started it up once you got an ffa is that right or was there more to to how i got started than that i started when i was in the ffa okay so you needed a project uh for the ffa and and you thought this would fit in yeah now, did you at your at your home? Did you have land to be able to raise the pigs, or did you have to come up with something creative there? I had a like a small space, but it wasn't that much land. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You can kind of get by on a smaller space and raising pigs, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you started out, how many pigs did you begin with? I started out small with about two. Okay, two sows or a boar and a sow, or how did you do that? I had a bow in the sow. Okay. And then over time, how large were you able to get that, you know, that herd of sheep up, or herd of sheep, or herd of pigs up to? Oh, I had a whole lot. <laughs> One time I had 52 piglets. Is that right? Wow. That yeah. is a bunch of piglets. So how many sows was that? Uh, seven. Seven? Seven sows. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And were you using artificial insemination or just letting the boar take care of business? Boar take care of business. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I've, I've had some trouble with that with my pigs, and I don't know what the deal is I having my my gilts get, get settled by the boar. Do you ever have any issues like that, or do they seem to take every single time? Mine usually take every single time. And I think I might have a boar problem. I might have to, I might have to get a new boar. Yeah. All right. Well, so you got started with pigs, and obviously, I mean, that's a lot of pigs to raise, and you're feeding them. So this is a question I always like to ask my, my folks that come on the show that are raising pigs, but were you purchasing your feed, or were you were you able to, to get it some other way? I purchase feed, and then I go to, like, a store that give away, like, slop and all that. Okay. So you were able to get some byproducts or some unused unused food stuffs and things like that and feed them to your pigs as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great way to, you know, take stuff that otherwise I guess what would be wasted to be thrown out and you can make something good out of it, right? 
Yeah. Very cool. And now once you got to the point where you were having this many pigs around and you were raising them all up, how did you market them? Did you just take them into the sale or did you, you sell them to people individually? What did you do? I sold them to people individually. So you had customers lined out that wanted to buy pigs from you and you had that all kind of set up? Yeah, I'd write it down that whoever wanted to buy when I write it down, then I just let them know when they were ready to go. Gotcha. So now, how did you find these folks? I mean, that's a lot of pigs to sell direct to folks. How did how did you find all of them? Most of them came from Craigslist, and a few of them were just people that we know. Gotcha. So you were putting ads up on Craigslist and and saying what that you had a finished hog that was ready to go to slaughter. Yep. Okay. And that and you were able to pull in that many people to be able to uh, to purchase from you. Yeah. That is fantastic. Now, did you find yourself having to raise the price of those pigs up to cover your feed cost? Yeah, I raise them. I raise it up probably so 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 often. So you were you were charging more than say if you'd taken them to the sale, what you'd get for them. Yeah, if I take it to the sale, I wouldn't get much for them. Yeah, that's right. I I've been down that road myself. So. When you when you raise the price of those up, what what do you tell your customers? How do you how do you justify the increased price of the of the hog to them? I usually just charge a dollar pound for them. Okay, so you just came up with a a, a per pound cost, and then yeah. uh, they were okay with that. Was was there ever any issues there for you in terms of competition with people selling selling finished pigs cheaper than you or anything like that? No. No? Okay, so you were able to get that done. That's great. Now, did you have many people that were doing the same thing as you in your community, or, or are you pretty competition-free? Uh, not many people up here raise any. Okay. Well, that's that's good news for the guy who, who wants to do it, and that is that is you, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, so now you're out, you're working, and you're raising pigs. What, what do you think about your time in the FFA? How has that helped you with – with both of these two things that you're doing now? Uh, I learned a lot from FFA, from the breeds and what to do and all that, and mm -hmm. even learned some from a grandpa. <laughs> Very cool. And what breeds do you like to raise? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I think they're all the same. Yeah. So you just have kind of a, just a, I don't know, just a variety of them out in the pen? Yeah. Very I got cool. some ham shafts and some burk shafts and some do rocks. Okay, very cool. Well, so as you look forward and and you're wondering or you know you're thinking about what you want to do going forward, both with your working career and and your your enjoyment of agriculture, what do you think? Do you want to continue to raise pigs as you as you move forward? Yeah, I think I'll raise some more as I get old. Very cool. And 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 about working. What you're doing right now, is this something you want to continue to do and kind of build your expertise and your resume up in, or are you looking looking at something else further down the line? Uh, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to just work. Very good. Well, Jamonte, I enjoyed hearing your story, and, you know, anytime I get to interview somebody from Virginia, I enjoy getting the picture of that beautiful state. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with us today. No problem. Well, thank you so much for being here, everybody, and thank you very much to Jamonte for coming on and talking all about his pig business. Really enjoyed hearing that story and just kind of getting the visuals from out there in Virginia, such a beautiful state. Well, everybody, we hope you join us again for our next episode, and as always, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture. <laughs>